We went to the Monkey River by a boat, um, the tour guide Percy's boat, and it was like 15 minutes of going through a mangrove, and then through some open ocean, and then into the mangrove again. And it, oh, all in all, it took like 30 minutes just to get to the Monkey River, and uh, that took a while. Um, it was really boring. Our friends that we had just met recommended the Monkey River tour um, and th what, this one tour guide, Percy, also known as King of the Howlers, which was just his nickname um, because as we would learn later on, he was able to summon the howler monkeys at will, basically. But here is where I use all the pool people legs. Where I run out of fuel. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, man. Run out of fuel and then I pull this out. Then we have to swim home. No, sir, I pull this out. <laughs> this is my oar that I call the mahogany diesel. Yeah. <laughs> it's never break down, Brenna. Yeah. On the like 30 minute boat ride, we stopped, we slowed down around this one island where we saw some like, we saw a lot of birds, like a at the one island that we slowed down by, there were a lot of broad-winged frigate birds. And they were, in the moment we got close, they all just took off in unison. And then we saw a few snow egrets around there as well. So the first thing we saw on the Monkey River was the, as Percy called it, jungle marshmallow. It's uh, this sort of like, it looks almost like a bean pod, but when you open it up like a banana, and inside there are these uh, like, subby, fuzzy, sort of um, coated seeds, that when you taste them, they t actually taste like marshmallows. And then you um, you just eat it and then suck on it and then spit out the seed. And as Dad was going to grab one, he picked it and then a scorpion fell onto our bag. And so Percy just uh, walked over, picked it up, pinched off its stinger, and then let people hold it. I didn't go near that scorpion. On, we were going up the river to get to this jungle walk, and um, once we got there, we put on these nets around our bodies to prevent bugs from biting us and stuff. Kind of like beekeeping suits or like bug nets you place around your tent or your car. And then you, we went into the woods and saw this, uh, like the first thing we saw five, like a, less than a minute in was this giant white crab. They said that as they get older, they turn from white to blue. That's why they're called blue crabs. And they only eat them when they're blue because that's when they're based, because that's in essence when they're ripe, basically. And good for eating. I'll show you. Yep. Come here, young lady.
a cedar tree. That big tree is a cedar. And that's the tree my parents had taken root and made wood bowls for. Distant away, quite a ways. We're going there. A little ways about there. We're going there. That's the royal palm tree, people. The tall palm there is the royal palm tree. Armadillo hole. Okay. This the tree is a fireproof stick. Probably. Yeah. This tree don't burn in the jungle, guys. This is the tree my parents we take and we make tongues for fire. So I will cut it here, here, clean this up nice, split it in the middle, put it over a fire and bend it, and you have a tongue. And we call it kiss kiss. <laughs> yeah. And this is the tree make I speak English. In the days of back, this is my history tree that we all have to learn when we go to school. This is the tree that the English and the slaves they fight against the Spanish and the slaves they use these as a weapon to survive. And we won the war against the Spanish. That's why I'm here speaking English. <laughs> so this is my tree that we call the Proconoboy tree, people. I get you some plums, you will love it in a while. Come on, let's go. We can't stand up too long. Nope. <laughs> we have there a breadfruit. And these are the leaves I use for my jungle camouflage. <laughs> you blend. That's why I camouflage myself in the bush. <laughs> I, use I the am now fruit. invisible. Yeah. Where was the breadfruit? Right above you. This tree right here is the breadfruit. Big hanging. Yeah, the leaves are whole leaves, right? <laughs> Magazine. Yeah. yeah. These are the bamboos sheet in. I use these as prongs, but you have to know to clean them up. Because I clean these up and I make prongs and I make paper stuff and I make arts out of these. And then when I'm ready, I say, if you're short, I want you to get tall. I take this like this, young man, and I make you a crown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you've got taller, man. Yeah. But this, you have to be careful that this, right? Because these are, have little. Uh, here is right, so mm. this is what I want. You don't want this to touch no way else uh, of you. So if you touch it here, mm. you know, just careful, and then you brush that off. Mm. Otherwise, if you touch too much part of your skin, you left like a, a spider no, like a triangular here. Oh, yeah, uh, it goes there, and your pores and scratch and scratch if you don't wash it off. Yeah, it's like a you know, irritation here. Yeah, but anywhere else from the bamboo is perfect. Oh, yay, leaf cutter end. Yes, he's going with his leaf there. He's carrying his leaf. He's wicked. He's oh, there's a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, look at yeah, that. He's carrying their leaf, you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Leaf cutter ass. <laughs> I want to go to the bottom of this if I find it. It's a tree my parents that take the root of these and they make, and they make the wood bowl so you can make flour tortillas and fry jacks. Oh. It's sweet. And now this is the tree the Mennonites they take and making all the furniture and sell them to me and you. Ah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's supposed to come blue right yes, there coming there out. Is. There, there he is. is. That's the glue. That's the tree I used to get the glue and put it on paper and it's paper glue people. I used to collect for my sister them in the school for the kids oh, for art. Blue. These mushrooms glow in the night. How cool is that? Heading back from the whole monkey walk, 
the Monkey River Jungle Walk, we ended up uh, stopping because there was this other tour group who said that they saw a, mom, a mama crocodile. And a lot of the people were uh, both in awe and fearful. So um, Percy just jumped right in there and grabbed the baby because most people didn't see it, but there was a little, tiny little baby crocodile floating in the water. And he just picked it up and uh, I managed to hold it along with my sister. It was pretty cool. And fun fact, crocodile mothers don't really care when you take their babies. It's got corn planted right here. Look at that. Jungle farm. We went to Percy's farm yep. where we saw his uh, plantain plants, his pineapples, his other yeah. assorted fruits and vegetables, and some sugar cane. And he cut up some sugar cane for us and the rest of the group. And we just chewed on it all the way back to the little town where Percy lived and stuff. That's how that, sorry, bye. That, that's how that will grow down here again. And this is it. And these are my little pineapple bed. Aww. You know, these chips are down here. And there's a banana, right? Did they and plantain. Plantain. Plantain, oh, okay. Yeah, there's a plantain. Huh? Did you broadcast anything in your phone? Percy, our tour guide, um, had lived his entire life in Monkey River and he was really excited to be showing this uh, tour group all around his home and we saw different places like his little uh, town and his farm and the main place where all the monkeys and other life forms are all in all uh, he was really excited to show us the Monkey River Everybody in Monkey River was related, he said. So that made me think, did they have a lot of incest there? And then we had some, uh, like, it was a Thanksgiving meal. Potato salad, turkey, cranberry jelly, that sort of thing. It was really uh, nice and tasty. But um, most of the time, we just saw their tails because they literally just went up for one big breath of air and then went back down. And then the moment anyone could point one out, they had already finished their breath and were going back down. And then you always knew where a manatee was when you, see, when you saw a dolphin fin because the dolphins follow the manatees because as the manatees uh, stir up the sand, it causes the fish to have to move, giving the dolphins something to eat. They're smart. And that's all for Belize. Be sure to join us next time as we enter Guatemalan waters.